Hey everyone, it's Pastor Dave from St. John in Woodbury, Minnesota. Thanks for checking out today's 5 Minutes of Hope for Thursday, August 13th. I pray that your week has been going well to this point. Uh, I pray that as we get closer to the weekend, that maybe you have something fun and enjoyable in store for you this weekend. Um, that, uh, again, as we, we like to say, as much as is possible during these very challenging times, uh, that life is going well for you. Uh, but as always, uh, my biggest prayer for you is that you are indeed filled with peace, with joy, and with hope because you know exactly what Jesus has done for you. Uh, so today, for our video devotion, as we do all the time, uh, I have a joke for the day. Uh, and this is about a lumberjack uh, and then uh, some devotional thoughts connected to our future glory. Uh, so first, uh, our joke about the lumberjack. And so there was uh, a forestry uh, business up in Canada uh, that was looking for a new lumberjack. And so they advertised for a new lumberjack. And uh, one day this uh, scrawny guy, skinny little guy with an axe shows up and, and knocks on uh, the door uh, for the building. And the boss opens the door and uh, takes a look at this guy, just kind of laughs at him and just slams the door in his face. And uh, this scrawny little guy knocks on the door again and the boss opens the door and he says, listen, we need a lumberjack, uh, lumberjack and uh, there's no way you can do this work. And uh, the guy says, listen, just give me a chance and I'll show you what I can do. And so the boss uh, points to a big old tree, a massive pine tree. He says, all right, take your axe over there and cut that tree down. The guy closes the door and uh, or the boss closes the door. The guy goes off and five minutes later, he comes back uh, to the boss's place, knocks on the door. Boss opens the door and the guy says, well, I did it cut that tree down the boss is absolutely amazed he looks over sees this massive pine tree just laying on the ground and the guy's like how could you possibly do this how could you cut that down where'd you learn to be such a skilled lumberjack especially someone so scr uh, scrawny and skinny as you and the guy looks at him and says well i learned in the sahara forest and the boss is like you mean the sahara desert and the guy laughs and says well yeah that's what they call it now there you go. There you go. Joke of the day. Eh, hopefully you'll at least make you chuckle or laugh at me for telling that one. But uh, um, there you go. Clean, wholesome, healthy forestry joke of the day. So like I said, our, our devotional thoughts for today are on uh, connected to our future glory. And this idea comes from uh, uh, numerous places in the Bible. But I want to point, to us, uh, point us to uh, what Paul writes in Romans chapter 8. Very famous chapter, a uh, wonderful chapter of the Bible, and especially um, these verses right, right here. In uh, Romans 8, verses 18 through 25, Paul writes these words. He says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits for, uh, with eager longing for the uh, revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is no hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. I think this is a very important passage for us, uh, especially right now. You know, this idea that we are promised that one day everything will be redeemed. You know, our bodies will be redeemed. Uh, we will experience the fullness of uh, God's perfect creation. That the, the world around us, with all of its brokenness, with the pandemic and viruses and uh, death, all of that will one day be fixed and restored perfectly. And so right now, uh, we groan <laughs> as we wait for this. Again, all of us, every person you ever meet, is groaning, waiting for the day where everything is perfect. We, we long for that day. But again, for us who know the truth about Christ, about what he's done for us, we know that because of him, because of his life, death, and resurrection, we know that one day we will indeed experience this perfection, this paradise, when uh, God makes all things new and everything is the way that it's supposed to be. In the meantime, we wait patiently for the promise that is ours, our future glory, when, again, 
we will be made perfect, when we will be glorified, when creation will be made perfect, when it will be glorified, that day when Christ will return to make all things new and perfect. And again, I think uh, that allows us to, uh, again, in a very, um, maybe sometimes a challenging way, but allows us to, to get through these days, these very difficult days, knowing that, again, we're all longing for perfection, but we know that day will come. And so we wait patiently. We know that with each passing minute and hour and day we are closer to that moment when we will get to experience life with christ in perfection in paradise and that life will never end